practicing counting. Yay! Oh it's Thursday. <laughs> so it's Thursday. What does that mean? Oh, it's time to chase some gin. I just took a really long way around. <laughs> so what are we trying? What yeah. kind of gin? Some laurel gin this week. With a side of sumac. In, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, we are doing floral gin this week, and I just decided to put and even will decide there. why we're having sumac as well. Yeah, just, I felt like it. <laughs> um, for everybody at home, uh, there was a very interesting conversation that was had about why we are doing sumac gin as part of our floral tasting, and the answer is it was an accident. Uh, well, nobody has actually asked. So but then it became fine. immediately apparent that nobody actually knows what sumac is. Hence why it was an accident. So, yeah. Um, Easy peasy. But what's sumac, Luke? Sumac is actually a berry. It's a spice, yes. Mm. Right, it's a berry. Berry, yes, but it's it dry. A spice and you just did Moroccan cooking regularly. Mm. So that's yeah. Anyway. It's tasty. So, okay. where are we going to start? I think possibly to start over here. Where is there? So, we are starting with the Fossies White Frontignac. What is White Frontignac? Russ? White Frontignac is a great variety. Variety, oh. Yes, right. And uh, white from yeah. white French grape variety, often used in sherries in Australia. Okay. Or sherry style wines, so very good. And why have we put it in a floral tasting? Because it's very floral smelling. It's usually quite can be quite sweet. We can um, make a straight straight still white wine and it comes out a lot like a Moscato. And the other reason it's part of our floral tasting is because white frontignac is one of the only grape varieties in which the flower is also used. Or I see. I see, I see. We have Liz that says, yay, gin! And then Lisa says, oh, I thought some was a spice. And says, hello, Anthea. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. So for everyone at home, we're starting with the Fossies white frontignac. I really like the smell of this one. Mmm. We were making the cocktail yeah. the other day. And we've got a couple, couple of cheeky little visitors up the back here. <laughs> yeah, we've got some in-store tasters today. So if you hear people shouting out from the uh, from the chorus, it would be Christine, Ash or James. Sensational. Sensational. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are we getting? What are we getting on the nose? What are we snapping? Snapping. Yeah. Pretty floral yummy to me. Oh, floral yummy. It's, um, it's kind of um, honey, kind of. Honeysuckle. Yeah. White grapefruit, hint of lemon. Lime. I just said lime. Yeah, lime. it reminds me of lime cordial or like lemon lime bitters. Okay, yeah. There's okay. almost an elderflowery sort of hint to it. Elderflower? Given we have got an expert panel here, Christine, have you got any <laughs> sensational smells out of this? I was going to say finger lime myself, finger but. Um, finger lime? Finger lime. Ooh. Actually, I'm thinking face on. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's Axe's sneaky face. <laughs> <laughs> it's my usual face. <laughs> Maybe a little pepperberry. Oh yeah. This yeah, I thought there was a bit of pepperiness to it. This is random, but I get a bit of lavender. Oh yeah. Random. Lavender. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah, I could see that. Mm. Lisa says, "Wow, this is surprising." She gets a bit of cinnamon. Oh, Lisa Reed. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Mm. Josh, we are starting with the Fossies White Frontenac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that being said, I'm going to dive in, you reckon? I like the smell of that. That's really nice. Wow. The texture is quite peppery, actually. Ooh, Ian said he was getting Szechuan pepper along with elderflower. Yeah, that's a really good point. That might be my pepper. Mmm. It's quite peppery on the palate. Ooh, it is. Floral it's a it's a light peppery. It's yeah, it's that sort of like white it's not pepper spicy, or Sichuan pepper. It's not so much like that really heavy, gutsy, cracked black pepper. Mm. Yeah, yeah pepperberry is a good point, Christine. Actually, wow. I was thinking the lavender was a good point. Actually, I can I can definitely taste more of the floral now. So, what would you think you would mix it with? Oh, I don't know. It'd be handy if we had some mixes, wouldn't it? We're a bit of a shambles this week. Um, we've, we've 
suddenly turned around and realised that it's Christmas. Idiot. Um, and or I've got some open in the other. I somehow got this idea that, that when I first tasted this, this sort of gin and tonicy thing, but now I think it could almost be a martini thing. Well, I made this into a martini sour last week. Yeah. Pretty good. Now what was a bit of lime. Christine, what are you thinking? Um, with your chore. <laughs> I'm lost for words for once. Mm. <clears throat> Yum. I'm going straight for the lime. The lime. And the ordinary one. Okay. The ordinary. Yeah, I think I'm going to follow suit. Give it a splash. I'm going to skip on garnish for a second. So we do have little wedges of lime and little um, slices of lemon here as well. Thank you. And orange. And some orange. And we've got thyme, we've got some tarragon, we've got some pea shoots. What's this? We've got some dry chrysanthemum. I was feeling very adventurous. Dry chrysanthemum? Right? Yeah. Well, it's very rare that I have um, good we garnishes. We could be a Monty Python sketch if we've got chrysanthemum. <laughs> But we're not. We're not. Lisa right, said we're it's making my lips tingle and she's looking straight. Ian has says fever tree elderflower and I'm a little bit tempted. So I think I'm, I'm a little bit tempted with that mm. too, yeah, yeah. It's nice for the Indian. Yeah. 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 It's not bad. Yeah. 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 I think it's because it, I like it because the Indian actually mm. because the Indian's quite bright and light, it really lifts some of the flowers out of it. But yeah, I'm with Ian on it. Maybe an elderflower type. Oops. Oops. <laughs> on the job. That is fine. Thank you. I'm going to add a little... Ooh, what are you adding on? I'm going to add time just to be experimental. You don't have much time. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> um, oh, that's it. Unavoidable, isn't it? That's it. Uh -huh. It works for me. It's, not, it's actually not bad with time either. Okay. Maybe not for everyone, but it's some. I quite like that. I'm not sure about. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I'm not unsure about the elderflower tonic. Eva's not sold on the elderflower. Oh well. I'm well, digging the Indian. It smooths out the pepperiness though, so it gives a bit more. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. I thought that with the Indian as well, so I wonder if that might just be the nature of the tonic. Or might just, just, just be some of the it. ethanol coming through as well. Yeah, that's true. Mm. The other thing I was going to say is quite, quite often when you add the citrus to it because of the acid, it changes the, the, the structure on the palate when you take it. But this one where I added the, the lime, it didn't seem to make any difference at all, which is interesting. That is good. Mm. Yeah, it didn't I, really make Interesting. Yeah, but I think it's good. actually gone kind of um, savoury. Like the floral, yeah. floral's kind of gone out of it now because I've got the, especially with the thyme, it's actually quite a savoury, dry kind of. Mm. I think it makes it quite flexible. Mm. Where would you want to be drinking this? Mm, I think it's like a spring type sort of, sort of a deal. Like an afternoon spring? Yeah, you know, because it's <clears> like <throat> a little bit, it's quite, it's bright, it's refreshing. No. It'd be good for pre dinner. Yeah. It's a pre dinner kind of drink. Dinner, that's for sure. It's a good point, Christine. Ross has got his thing. Yeah, I think it might do a good as a long drink, really. Like an afternoon, big, big glass, lots of ice. Nice. Not too much yeah. tonic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it does make a good martini, that's for sure. Yeah, that was really good. Ashcamps, where do you want to drink this? Pup. Hey, I'll just <laughs> In a martini, like like at the end of the night, like, it's quite Ooh. herbal and floral and stuff. It could almost help yeah, it's gonna make a pretty pretty rock cracking martini. Bit of a nightcap mm. martini. Yeah, but Digestive. Yeah, even by itself, it sort of reminds me a bit of Akavit. Like it was quite. Akavit. Interesting. Mm. I just thought it was quite funny. Father like son sitting both the exact same oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's usually Luke picking on me, but you picking on me now. You were just sitting there the exact same way. It's a bit odd. Shall we move on? Yes. Please. Are we ready? What are we moving on to? Oh. Ink. Ink gin. 
Now, this is made with what? Butter puff. Blech. Oh wait, quick question. Jen said, how would the fossies go with the violet liqueur? Ooh. Ooh. You'd have to be very careful. Um, I feel like there'd be a lot going on. It would be a lot bit going on, especially because the frontenac is very light and floral to start with. I think the two might get lost in each other. I'd add a few drops of lavender though, I think. If I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. I'll report back, Jen. <laughs> Give it a go. Well, the ink gin, a bit of a party trick. Purple from the, what sort of pea is it? Butterfly pea. Butterfly pea. Butterfly pea. And, um, if you're wondering how peas are purple, it's the flower. Mm. The flower and the butterfly pea. Now, it also does a colour changing trick, which we'll do in a minute. A trick, a magic trick. A, a magic trick. It's not necessarily a trick so much as it's just. No, it, it actually proves that what I've discussed many times in our testing, and that is the chemical reactions that will go on in a drink. pH spell. And that's this, since you've got the. That's right, since you put the citrus in, it changes the pH and it changes the colour of the... So it's like a litmus test. Mm. Anyway. And this is all natural colouring as well, which I yep. find amazing. We did discover that it's natural colouring the very hard way. And that was because we put a bottle in the window display one, one year. <laughs> <laughs> and when we went to change the window display a couple of weeks later, it was, um, it was not purple anymore, it was yeah, sort of a dirty clear colour. So they have changed it so it says um, natural organic infusion on the label. So the colouring do not put in sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. Mm. Now I love the smell of this because it is so green. Do you think it would go well in a martini? Like a savoury sort of green. It's very, it's, yeah, it's definitely got that um, sort of like herbaceous botanical note to it. I do wonder if this would be what this would be like in a martini, actually. Mm. <laughs> no, I have to. What do I do? Do all the silly stuff. I was just going to put lemon. Ready? Watch it. Oh, <laughs> ripped off. Nothing happened. <laughs> what are you doing? You might need to yes. Give it a squeeze. Well, it's going. It does depend on the citrus as well. I found it works pretty well with lime juice. Okay. Which we tested in a little cocktail. Uh, cocktail. Oh, that's all right. I'm ripped off. Every other time I've done it, just goes dry no. pink straight away. Look oh, at yeah. the two colours. Oh, yeah. One's blue, one's purple. Yeah. Yeah, there's a definite difference. They are very small slices of lime. Oh, yes. Lemon. Okay. I'm going to go with lime because... You think it's going to have a better reaction? Yeah. I'm going to go with a little bit of ice now. Look at that! Magic! Uh, hang on. Whoop, hang on. No. Side by side. Look at that. Bing bang no. bong. Boom shakalaga. Yeah, yours is much bigger than mine, so... Oh, anyway. The pH. I gave it a good yeah. squeeze of lime though. The pH test works. Um, Eva says she's had this gin before with a little cloudy apple juice. I dare say that would um, go down pretty well. Well, actually, apart from the fact that when I taste it now, it is actually a serious gin. I remember the first couple of times I had it, it was like, this is just a party trick. It might have changed, changed colours. That, that being said, number one gimmick. That being said, when I first tasted it, um, which was, I think, when it was first released, I don't think that it tasted exactly the same as it does now. I think they've perfected their recipe a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I've had this garnish with cucumber in it before, and that went quite well. Green cucumber? Green yeah. Mm. Um, I'm going to be adventurous because I went to the effort of picking pea shoots. Pea shoots. So, I figure, why not? Will pea shoots make it change colour? No, 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 it's not for pea, it's different. Mind you, <coughs> It does keep its blue pretty well. I like how Ian said, my 18 year old just asked if I'm drinking methylated spirits, but he does work at Bunnings. <laughs> you know, have, you can get coloured methylated spirits. <laughs> I do appreciate that, that's quite funny. <laughs> is is uh, Indian tonic available? Indian tonic is available. I can look like another one. Please. Please. Very evil. Thank you. I've got to say, yeah. even just with a bit of ice, this is 
still a pretty gutsy gin once again. Like it's got a, packs a bit of a punch to it, which is nice. Packs a bit of a punch? I'm going to okay. go for Mediterranean, which is rare for me. Yeah, I might join you in that, Luke. I realise that we just... What's Ashley sneaking up for? More Indian. Indian? <laughs> <laughs> Indian Indian I realise that we didn't sip this before we started citrus in it. Oh, I didn't. I did. What were your thoughts? It's quite peppery. Peppery? That's what I'm saying. It, it really does keep its punch, even once you put ice in it. Quite citrusy, too. Yeah. It's like a really... And so I usually at home have this with lime. I think it goes really nice with that sort of like green, bright, zesty. Yeah, I've only put lime juice in it and I'm sipping <coughs> it. And I'm like, have I put tonic in this? And I have it. And I... <laughs> it goes down really easily. Yeah. Um, I sometimes just have it with a good squeeze of lime juice and some soda. And it, because it's so oh, green and so. fresh and zesty, it doesn't need a whole lot of um, medicine. No, actually, I might get some cubic ice cream. Whoa, that's a completely different thing with the Mediterranean punch. Yeah? Yeah. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's really good. I've only had it with Indian before. Yeah, it's good. Good? Thank you. <laughs> that's right, he's a bartender. You can tell I'm Because I can use an ice scoop. An ice <laughs> Very scoop. difficult job there. I haven't been trained in ice scoop. <laughs> ice scoop, I'll hold you. Ice scoop, I'll hold you. Would you like some ice? I got some ice cream. Um, where do we want to be drinking it? At the Host Distillery. It's amazing. I've been. Ooh, yeah. That's cool. It's so nice. Like, it's in the middle of sort of the country, sort of maybe about 20, 30 minutes up from the beach. So, I spend the day at the beach, then go and sitting there. It's got a beautiful view of the countryside and oh, there's dogs running around. Mm, I will say, it, I did um, sneak peek on this one because I do have this gin at home and I had a little trickle yesterday when I got home from work. And it was really nice. So just, you're doing just your as the sun, thing. just as the sun was setting, I was just sitting there watching the sunset, having my first drink of the day. It was lovely. I think that's where I want to be drinking. Delightful. Yeah. Yum yum yum. What about you, Christine? What do you want to drink? This? Um, I'd I'd actually drink that drink that at a garden party with I, I like the cucumber suggestion, cucumber yeah. and mint, I think. Mm, play on the green botanicals a little bit. I, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a garden party style gin too. Mm. Yeah. I dare say it would make a good yeah. Even it's very light, party. very clean, very <laughs> Just the garden party sounds a bit fancy. I like mm. the idea. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the rooftop on top of Madame Brussels. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a fair point. Well. Yeah. It doesn't it definitely doesn't need a lot of tonic either. I think a little bit goes a long way with that. I haven't been, I didn't put any tonic in, I just got some ice and some citrus, so it's mm. good. Mm. That's way too easy to drink. Hey, I actually have a big crossover. <gasps> what? The Dobsons that make sumac gin also make a pea flower gin. Oh. And I, I think they might have made it about at the same time, maybe even slightly before Husk made the ink gin. Interesting. And I used to sell the, the, the Husk, uh, the Dobsons pea flower gin. Only because I missed a, a stockist on their website one day, tricky then, and somebody rang me up and said, you got a couple of bottles of that pea flower gin? Or, <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'll wait for that oh. <laughs> And it, it's interesting. I'm not sure if they use... So then they had to order some inch. I'm, I'm not sure if they use a butterfly pea, though, because it comes no, out do. slightly more pink they do use the butterfly than the ink gin. Yep, they use the butterfly pea. Oh. The McHenry's do as well. And there's one of the Scottish mobs that's using butterfly pea. Is that the 1608 butterfly? Or something like that, yeah. They call it the butterfly gin, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah. It is quite popular. People always come in and ask oh. me. They're like, the changing colour one. The, <laughs> no, um, the Scottish one call it the um, Empress gin. Ah. You know I mean? I so, yeah. And what I haven't mentioned is that of all the tastings that we've done of all the gins, this is the first one in which we're tasting three gins that I drink on a regular basis. Really? Yeah. Oh. I've um, so I have all of these in my collection except for the white printing app, which I recently yeah. finished. Oh, that's very good. Well, generally, the, the sumac gin is sort of like a, a tagine in a glass. Totally disagree. Totally disagree. I think that's absolute top of Okay. Right. <laughs> but then again, I guess sumac is one of those things where it's 
it reminds you of your personal references to things. You yeah. know, so Ross uses it for cooking tagines and Mediterranean dishes all the time. I use it for cocktails and all sorts of other things, salads. Salads? Like Sumac dressing. Yeah, okay. really good. Okay. I sprinkle it on eggs or um, I make up rice cakes with like sliced tomato and avocado and sprinkle sumac on Yeah, that. good with eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The interesting thing about sumac, despite <coughs> the fact that it's berry and it's dry and it's treated like a spice, it also has notes of like um, lemon zest and sort of like a nice woodiness. It's really quite complex. You guys are probably going to think I'm crazy, but the first thing oh, I smelt oh. was just vanilla and cake batter. I don't know why. I get the vanilla notes actually. I guess it comes along with that almost that dried woody sort of note. Yeah, that was just completely unexpected. There's something in there that I just can't get. But there's like a certain like cleaning thing I've used before. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's reminding me of that. I'm like, it doesn't smell like that, but it's just the same. What about those popsicles that are like orange and have cream with them? Oh, Ooh. slices. Slice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Orange. Yeah. Orange slice. It's like an orange peel, sort of. Orange but it's like oil. really oily. Orange oil. I'm now thinking orange, orange poppy spray. seed cake. Yes. <laughs> Uh -huh. yes. Air freshener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one that you use to clean and to air freshen and do whatever you want with. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. But it's it, like that stuff is basically just, it's it's just it's orange oil, basically, that stuff. Anyway. Yeah. No, 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 it goes with other things. Yeah. It's positive. It's a positive thing. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about orange. Mm. I don't, see, I don't get that much orange out of it. I do now that yeah. I'm Liz said I can smell orange and Janine says citrus. Ooh. I definitely got like a lemoniness, but. No, I'm getting the orange bit. Ian, orange and spices are dried spices. Ian put sumac on chicken to barbecue it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I do that. I do that too. I do that. Pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I do that. I need to do that. Little, little, little that. A little sip. A little sip. Sip, sip. Actually, also, how about this one? It is slightly off. It's an off-white. Yeah, um, the colour. When it first arrives in store, it is um, a very pale straw colour. Okay. Much like the butterfly gin, within the first week it loses most of its colour. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes if you leave your bottle on the shelf for long enough, you'll get a little crumbs sumac at the bottom. Oh, wow. um, they do, from what I understand, filter it to a certain degree, but they don't over filter it. So there are tiny particles of sumac in there. I did notice this because I picked up a bottle to do some bottling last week, and it yeah, had you can sit. Oh, yeah. the little the little ring of um, sumac dust at the bottom, which is actually a really good thing. Yeah, means I haven't overfiltered it or overprocessed it. Yeah. Does anyone else get bubble gum as well? Just yes, <laughs> yes. I literally just got it. James just said bubble gum. Bubble yum, actually. <laughs> it's an American type of bubble gum. Oh. To be specific. Yeah. <laughs> specifically to Oklahoma, which is a Alabama. <laughs> I really like the mouthfeel of this one. Yeah, it's quite silky, isn't it? Mm. It's really, really like rich and round on the bottom of the mm. palate. Mm. I think a lot of the gins that we get have a really large mouthfeel around the top of the palate, but this is like really like filling on the tongue. Yeah. But I'm having trouble picking the flavours from it. It's a very com like confusing flavour profile in terms mm. of like different. Mm. Okay. What do you think, Ross? Mm. Yeah, like it is. It's it that, that kind of dried spices comes <laughs> 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 a, a, a quite broad range of things because they kind of like sort of blend everything. Well, I'm going to garnish... Well, yeah, good tagine should be. Anything like that with dried spices. <clears throat> well, I suppose if you balanced it correctly, balanced, yeah. you shouldn't be able to pick out any one flavour. Yeah. You should just get an overall kind of mm, flavour yeah. profile. Mm. I kind of get that with this in the middle palette. It's just on my just on. Now, I'm going to add some lemon and a little bit of tarragon at the risk of... Tarragon? Mm. I'm going to go for orange. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. <laughs> 
Just I, so you know what bubble yum looks like. <laughs> she just posted a link to bubble yum. <laughs> I love that. Actually, I'm going to try the tarragon first, then add the citrus. Because huh? I have a feeling the citrus is going to dominate. The tarragon brightens it up. It takes it away from that orange cleaning product and makes it quite earthy and a little bit of aniseed, a little bit of green botanicals. That's quite yum. Josh has said, maybe it's the truffle brie talking, but I'm going to check that cherry cough syrup. That is strange. The cheese stands alone. Yeah, so I've got lemon and tarragon here. I think I'm going to go for a little bit of Indian if we have some more either. Indian, yes, it is. Should I put the arrange for you? For me? Give it a cup. What did you just do again? Tarragon. Tarragon. Can I have some ice cream juice? Is that this one? Tarragon's really good. Mm. I'm liking it with the orange as well, tarragon and, and going, orange. Am I going too far with the Mediterranean tonic, do you think? I think with the, with the tarragon you can play up that sort of like earthy... Because you know sometimes you go to the Mediterranean that's just one step to too many flavours. Yeah. See, I, I, see, the reason I brought tarragon <coughs> in today was number one, to never find tarragon in the supermarket, so I went and played some. Oh, really? Number two, yeah. came across it. Mm -hmm. Was it growing at your place? Like, growing. Let's smash that. In the dirt. Oh. Um, the last two tarragon plants I've planted, I've killed, so. But maybe it's pretty good with stuff like that. Uh, partial sun, lots of fertilizer, plenty of water. Leave it alone. That's it. We have to do. Oh, um, no. But yeah, and the other reason I bought some tarragon is because I found a tarragon recipe for a cocktail. Yeah. And I was I'd never seen tarragon in Greece before. And I tried it with another gin and it was amazing. Wow. It's a little bit of aniseed, a little bit of green botanicals, a little bit of basiliness to it. Really brightens up some complicated gin. Interesting. Ross, you had a big reaction to that one. You said yum. Oh, um, yeah, I've had this some actually off and on for quite a, quite a long time. I like it's interesting. Like, you open, oh, wow, this is really good. And you have a couple of fantastic, <laughs> and yet I find out really just sort of sit for a month before I come back to it. You've gone Mediterranean, didn't you? Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah, I, would, yeah, I did. I, I dare say you could do tarragon and soda. Ooh, really? I don't know that it needs to. I certainly haven't had it with tarragon before, so I'm quite, quite liking that. I'm oh. really liking the tarragon. But I've had it with lemon and orange. And, and Mediterranean is good. Yeah. See, my concern is, cool. you know, when everyone in the room says orange, if I put orange in that, I won't be able to go much further. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm glad you suggested something else because I was like, I can't put any other citrus with this. I didn't, didn't think when you said tarragon. I was like, what about? See, well, yeah, this, about? Is, this is what Trish from Fever Tree talks about quite a lot, which is like, when it comes to garnishing, it's not always about comparing, but sometimes contrasting. Yeah, okay. You know, not just something that goes with the flavour that's already in it, but something to bring it out, something to brighten it up and sort of like... Yeah, that, it. But, but you've also... <clears throat> care is needed because like, this shows that with the pH that so there's a bit of a chemical reaction can go on mm. between your, your fruit and your gin. And sometimes a chemical reaction is not just this flavour doesn't go with that flavour. Sometimes it's actually like this changing. It changes stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, so sometimes, and that's why I really like the Mediterranean gin, but it's only about 30% tonic. Percent, sorry, tonic. There's only about 30 to 40% of gins it goes with because there's some gins you put the Mediterranean and it just like... It's hit and miss, isn't it? So, yeah. It's, it's and it's really the oil, <coughs> there's a fair bit of rosemary in that, so it's the oils in the rosemary that tend to react with different floral things, and it can taste of quite bad flavours. Yeah. Well, this is a conversation I had with um, someone the other day about the difference between lemon and lime, and they were saying that 
oh, lime's just a bit more sour. And I was doing some research and, you know, lemon has citric acid, lime has two different types, uh, citric acid and another type of acid. And then... Yeah, ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid. Okay. And then um, things like grapefruit have like three or four different types of acid, which is why it's both sour and bitter and... Um, I mean, like sweet. Oh. So it's like, it's not just about, you know, how sour or sweet or herbaceous, but yeah, that chemical structure is quite interesting. Sure. Uh, now, where do we want to be drinking this? Hmm. Oh, I think I could be drinking this all night long. All night long. All night long. All night long. I think, I think... Just give me the rock and roll feeling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> once watch you put a, a bit watch of... Out. I think with oh, a bit of lemon and a bit of um, tarragon, oh. with lots of ice, I think... You know when you get to the absolute peak of summer and it's like sunlight till 9.30 at night and it's kind yeah. of just like, I've got to keep partying otherwise I'll realise that it's not daytime anymore. Sleep, rock and roll, all night. Rock and roll. What band are you listening to, Ross? Oh, all of them. Oh, it's, um, I reckon it's a Black Sabbath Volume 4. Whoa. <laughs> nice. <Don't you>? Wow. <laughs> Very specific. Fair or maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just you. The thing is, it's it's so easy to drink that you'd, you'd sip it and then you'd be chatting to people and you'd be like, oh my God, someone's just drunk my whole drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's evaporated through the hole in the top of the glass. Mm. I imagine it in a pitcher, actually. Lots of terrible. Yeah, like a big jug. Yeah, like a yeah. cocktail jug. Ooh. Cool jug. Actually, I dare say this would take a lot of different garnishes quite well. Mm. So I dare say you could, if you made it in a jug, you could really Put fill a lot it up of almost... Almost there. like to treat it like a pim's cup and mm. like fill it with like strawberries and tarragon and cucumber and all sorts of things. Actually, Do strawberries it. would be interesting. Strawberries would be good. And call yeah. me crazy, but I wouldn't I'm mind just trying the it. With of a... Ash's eyes. She's okay. very excited about the idea. Yes. <laughs> I'm very excited. Yeah. I I actually try this with the cheekiest little splash of the um the ginger dry the fever tree dry ginger ale. Mm. And maybe it might bring out some of that spicy, woody, sort of orangey. I'm yummy. thinking that with the orange and the tarragon would actually make we'll a really interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, looks looks onto it. It's, a, it's always every time <laughs> it's a spice fever tree. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
reminding myself of the idea of a pins jug, which is mm. lemonade and ginger ale. Yeah. It kind of makes yeah. a really good gin substitute in that regard. Yeah. And you could use the ink as like a palate cleanser between courses <laughs> with that's the true. cucumber and the mm. mint. I actually, yeah, that's a good point. I also think that something like the ink gin I could drink with food. Mm. Because you know, it's, it's light, it's refreshing, it's simple. It's nothing too ballsy. Yeah. yeah. So you could like have your appetizer, your mains, and then once all the food's out of the way and you're you know, getting into the middle of the I'll just get that over your Moroccan food. Moroccan food! <laughs> <laughs> Moroccan Moroccan. Well, I think you guys might have stumbled on a very good dinner lineup. Yeah. That's a meal right there. Looks like Christmas. Dinner is served. <laughs> Beautiful. What do we have any last comments on these gins? Ah, uh, maybe barbecue lamb chops. Oh. If you taste it with the ginger ale, I agree. No, I'm not sharing a glass with you. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of gins? Um, do we have any last comments on these gins? Um, I think what's really interesting about these gins is I actually think all of these gins could do multiple things. I think they could all do a gin and tonic, they could all do a cocktail, they could all do on the rocks, they could all do a martini. Sweet. So I dare say, like, three really versatile gins. Mm. Whereas normally we taste three gins and one's the versatile and one's the sipping and one's the, like gin, the and gin and tonic. Well, these context. are the three that you definitely have on your shelf. Yeah. Yeah, context would play yeah. go a long <laughs> way with which one you'd decide to drink. Yeah. That being said, I do like really different gins. So between producer. all three of them, like tell us the scenario of when you would have each one. Um, the white frontenac is like a cocktail, a, ve a, a boozy cocktail, like a really yeah. spirit forward cocktail. The ink gin is like a really large gin and tonic with lots of ice. And the sumac is like when you feel like doing something silly and you want to put a crap ton of tarragon and cucumber and what have you silly summer yes around. silly sunday is that what silly, you said? well i was saying silly summer why not oh. end on a sunday <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> um i like how ian had said find the venue i'm cooking we're set woohoo done <laughs> beautiful so if you don't know and you've heard us talk about it before um the famous ian our favorite one of our favorite viewers at the moment is the famous ian who is a amazing chef so yeah, maybe we'll have to organise something. We'll, once the borders are fully open and we're feeling a little bit more limber, <laughs> we might have to organise a, a big old a cook, up. cook up with <laughs> lots of cocktails and drinks and food and yummy yummy. Yeah. And everything that sounds match amazing. And matching the we'll do a bit of we'll do a bit of drink pairing, food pairing. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, yeah, like uh, we might Where have to. Where does Ian live? In South Australia. Mount oh. Gambia. Let's go. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like a we'll just come visit you. Sounds like a we sell a holiday road trip. We can stop I'm down. Glossies on the way. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll stop through Mildura, pick up some, some more. Wigs on box. wheels. I feel like Wigs I'm selling this really Wigs well. on wheels. <laughs> Wigs on wheels. Oh my gosh, it's such a uh, sorry, I've been marketing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can we have road race? Um Josh has asked Luke, which tonic would be bosses? Um, Fossies, I would possibly recommend the Indian, but go go light on it. Or just soda? Uh, I'd be careful with the soda. It can, while soda doesn't add so flavour from things like quinine, um, the carbonation can be a problem. Um, particularly for something that's light and peppery, like the Fossies Frontignac, the taste of carbonation actually can affect that. Um, so yeah, you might even just want it with ice and like a large dash of water or a little bit of Indian is good. Um, but I think it doesn't need a whole lot of tonic. And then there's a... Next week. Next, Woo. Week. Woo. Next week is our last tasting of the year. Oh, I'm so excited. We've been talking about this tasting for a little while. Um, to do more of a French spritz, which is deliciousness. Do yeah. you want to run us through them, Luke? Oh, so... Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll hand them to Luke as we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, hold, hold. We're not going to start there. What we're going to start with is um, some of my favourites. So, we were talking about spritzes a couple of weeks back when we were doing the Italian spritz. Uh, and someone said to us, could you use a non-prosecco? And mm -hmm. we said, yeah, you could. But prosecco is fruity and goes with dry Italian liqueurs. 
and then you use something like an, a French style sparkling, which is dry, for the opposite, which is like a sweeter liqueur and a fruitier li liqueur. So yeah. they're dry with sweet sort of combo. And someone said, oh, what would you do? And we said, goes well with something like Mandarin Napoleon, gives you a nice bit of fruit. Goes nice with something like a ginger, a little bit of spice. And it goes nice with something a little bit floral. So something like an elderflower. So we've kind of ended up with three different types of French spritz using a French sparkling wine. Wait, put it. These guys are buying some kind of um when you're wearing a rosy over here. Um, a French sparkling wine, so we've decided to use a nice um, a nice dry blanc de blanc. We picked the Jacqueline, nice good a blanc de blanc. Blanc de blanc. Beautiful. So yeah. It's all on uh, bit of floral, bit of spice, bit of fruit. And because we can have people in store, come and join us in store. Yeah. We have spots available still. Get in touch and you can be behind the scenes. I and can see guarantee the... you it's a good time. A good time. Yeah, see yeah. the <laughs> absolute chaos and debauchery that happens in store. <laughs> <laughs> the pre-chaos. Yeah, I mean, most of that happens once the camera's off. So. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that being said, we'll see you all next week. Look after yourselves. Enjoy the weather. Um, Merry Christmas. See you next, See you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>